Welcome back to Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists. Snap camera roll. It's time to record, but you're behind the camera. That's right. We're talking to famous cinematographers who have all recently just been nominated for Oscar. You've heard the phrase lights, camera, action. And one of those things is very essential to these four individuals. And I bet you can guess what it is. It's camera. Cinematographers, also known as directors of photography, and are, are they're also known as DPs. They've got a lot of names, but they've got one job, to make things look good. Now get comfortable, stand on a rig, and listen in. Well, this is, this is so good to be here. This camera's shit. This camera's shit, man. Well, I tried yes, to get... I am. I'm working with a webcam. Are you guys working? I'm working with, with a webcam. Anything? Yeah, I tried to get my Black Magic to film on this pod, but they wouldn't let me bring it in. It's too hot. It's too heavy. That's, it, that's so funny. You don't have the MacBook Air that has the uh, attachment to add the Black Magic on top? Nah, I don't have the Black Magic MacBook. I don't have that. You Those got things, that? The Black Magic it weighs the computer down so much. The I heard it distorts the. Handle. I heard it distorts the screen. No, no. <laughs> if you get used to typing with the big thing on top of it, it's actually really wonderful. We have them in Vienna. Really? Austria. Oh, cool. Yeah. I, I, I always I was nervous that it would distort my screen because it, I I see the I, I when people try to close them it looks like someone got water on a book because they're always they're always like bent those MacBooks after you use a black magic on them. I don't know, man. Maybe I'll give it a shot. But otherwise, forgive my garbage <laughs> have, have fucking guys, screen. Have you guys considered the Sony A7S? It's nah, actually... dude, I'm not talking about Sony here. We don't talk about Sony, dude. dude. I'm not talking about Sony. Listen, is it Adobe or I walk? <laughs> Adobe just... camera, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Sony man myself. I am, I am a legion to uh, Sony crew. And, no way, uh, dude. That is what we are rocking with, and that is what I rocked with for 40 Nights, the movie. That no got us way. All. 40 Nights was amazing, and I could tell it was shot on a Sony. It just, I it, could tell. Yeah, it, I thought like I, it might have been shot on the new Adobe camera, um, <laughs> but uh, of course and we're then, talking about Adobe Editing Sheets <laughs> camera. They have uh, Photoshop yeah. built into the camera as well. Yeah. It's a, yes. You can get the whole suite. You can uh, do it all on there. It's very yes. interesting. Yes, I, I mean, my movie is the first movie to be shot on an Adobe camera and to be edited with a Canon. Yeah, I, 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 I can't, I can't wait. Uh, can't you wait for exported from Adobe yeah. into the Canon uh, camera viewfinder. Well, and you that's what I there. heard. Yeah, yes. that's what I heard. I heard it's completely uh, ready to go, but you uh, can't figure out how to take it out of the Adobe camera. I heard well, the exporting well, has been an issue. Okay, exporting is always an issue with those things, you know. Obviously, you are all uh, <laughs> you are all very connected, and you know, you know my business. Let's all let's all get to know each other's business before. Okay. I yeah. would well, love I, to get I gotta to know say each first, business. I, can, I gotta say first, speaking of each other's business, I can't believe I'm on a freaking interview with two people who are Sony ponies. I feel like I'm in the Twilight Zone. I feel like my ratio is 16-9 because it is nuts to me right well, now hey, that you guys we... love Sony. As you guys know, I'm a Canon man, and, and that's that's who I am. That's who I've always which, been. Which is so funny to me because Canon has always felt 2010. It's uh, it's it feels like you're a little stuck in the past, but I don't mind that. Person. But that's why it's the premier editing software now. It was the premier camera, and now I'm using it as an editing software. We'll get to that later. I guess we will. I can't wait for that one to tease, my man. <laughs> the people listening to this must be riveted with that sentence, just waiting for that. Oh, let's go around. Yeah, I only know you by your shots. I want to hear who you guys are as people. Well, of course, I am. Uh, uh, my name is Ralph. Uh, Ralph Jenkins from Oslo. Uh, Jenkins. <laughs> Jenkins is what we're going with. Um, Ralph That's such Jenkins. A, such a Norwegian last name. That's insane. <laughs> Jenkins. It's uh, Norwegian by way of Michigan, by way of back to Norway again. We sort of did a, an immigration uh, boomerang, oh, so if you will. You, went, you started in Norway, went to... Uh, Michigan. Family got immigrated the last name, to Michigan. Got the got last the name last and came name, back. Went back to Oslo. Uh, then we immigrated. <laughs> got our accents back. Immigrated back to uh, Los Angeles this time. I where... heard that's a that's a big European trend. Just moving to Michigan for the last name. I'm hearing a lot about that. 
Well, yes, it is time to, you know, we want to fully uh, get into that American culture and it is a good way to just pick them up. They let them, they let you pick them up uh, really easy now. It is mm. like uh, Michigan is the new Ellis Island for uh, Scandinavian people. Um, anyway, <laughs> so my name is Rolf Jenkins. What a tease, my man. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be returning to that, but yeah, sure. What a tease. <laughs> I don't think we're going back. I don't think we're going back. I will well, continue. I gotta say, Rolf, I absolutely adored uh, the way that you captured um, your movie, 40 Nights. or 40, 40 Nights. Nights is gorgeous. Yes, Beautiful. thank you. And of course, uh, I was working with uh, the director, uh, Chris Myers, uh, very closely. And something we really wanted to do was code time in different shots, right? And so what I mean by that is... If the character is perceiving reality correctly, it is shot in sepia tone. Mm. If it is a flashback, we are doing inverted colors. Mm. If it is a flash forward, we are doing black and white. And if it is open to interpretation, we are doing glitter fan cam. So it is the sort of code that the audience must learn as they watch the story of 40 Nights, which is, of course, a harrowing tale about the inventors of the Nerf gun. That's amazing. So Gorgeous. I've got a question right off the bat really quick. Did you shoot those in camera like or those added effects later? Did you set for black and white? Did you set for sepia? Did you set for glitter fan cam? Oh, uh, of course. Of course, we have to sh uh, set for those things. That was uh, one of the big struggles of uh, television stations when they had to go from black and white to color, right? They had to paint the sets differently. They had to light everything differently. And I tell you what, it is very diff difficult to light for fan cam. Mm -hmm. We have to mm. uh, coordinate with the makeup team, make sure everybody's cheeks look rosebud, rosy red, and adorable eyelashes huge for it to make sense within the aesthetic. So there mm -hmm. are are lots of precautions you have to take ralph I mean, my question is because i feel like i'm dealing with it i got i got three kids they're obsessed with the internet they're obsessed with tiktok and they always you know i feel like all the colors and filters that you just mentioned they could do in 30 seconds so i want i want you to tell me you know so they can finally hear why our job is so difficult and what they're doing isn't what we do. Like, can you explain that? Because I really no, need help. I mean, there, and I'm so glad you brought this up. I'm so glad you brought this up because there is such a difference between any blowjob who gets on CapCut and puts on some glitter onto a video. They yeah. are not making art. Sure, they don't call making... my kids blowjobs, but I totally understand your sentiment. No, I agree. I kind of agree with Rolf here. Your kids could sound like blowjobs. My kids aren't blowjobs. Is a blowjob blow like we do in Vienna, a suck and puck? Whoa, new hat. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where's so that hat come from? A new hat and a new oh, price. I forgot. I forgot that I'm here as an ambassador for Canon. <laughs> oh, you are. You're on my side. <laughs> you're awesome. Oh, yes. Canon Manning. Out the window. No, I shot the movie on Adobe. I edited it on Canon. So you, they gave you permission to edit too as the cinematographer. You know what? We're teasing we too it. much about we you. Do it. We are teasing too like, much about you. I would just you. like to apologize really quickly. I did not mean to refer to your specific children as blowjobs. Okay. I meant to refer to any specific random bozo as a blowjob. Okay. And there is no direct harm to your family I yes. intended. Yeah, my family's safe for sure. I don't think there's any direct <laughs> harm happening. I'm not saying that, but I appreciate your apology. Protect I, your blowjobs. No, okay. they're my kids. Let's stop Protect saying them. that here. My kids aren't blowjobs. In fact, they are they are results of, of penetrative sex, if anything. So so I wouldn't call them blowjobs. Now we are getting into the weeds of this, right? We <laughs> should <laughs> maybe move on. We're getting into sure. the weeds. And also, sure, it's we like, can listen. Move on. We have four DPs around the table, and now we are already talking about penetrative sex. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> we truthfully have not gone here in a while. We have not yeah, gone here yeah. in this direction in yes. in some time. Not since I was uh, shooting some maybe uh, different stuff for maybe a different award season. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. Another great tease. Cannot wait to get into that. <laughs> a good tease. A good tease. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My computer with the black magic on top of it, sometimes I can't see you guys. I have to push it up. Um, 
Hello, I am Glitter Skonk in Vandich Gudvit from Vienna Skondve. Um, so what's your first name? Glitter? Does it Glitter Skonk? Glitter. Is that... Glitter. Glitter, okay. And one more cool. time glitter. for me. Just one more time. Glitter Skonti Skonti Skonti. I'm from Vienna Skonda. Yeah, it feels like it changes. Fuck you. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Austria. I um, am... Oh, no way! I, I could tell by the sound of your voice that you were from Austria. It, of course. It sounds so different from the way I'm speaking, which is Norway. Of course. <laughs> yes. Aust oh, Vienna. One second. <laughs> okay. Sometimes, yes. So, anyway, I... <laughs> um, Glitter's my first name. Um, and I am nominated this year because we're doing, we're breaking grounds with the first Adobe camera. Um, and, um, shooting on the interface, the editing software. And then I am editing with my editor on the Canon. Um, and it's, it's, it's new. It's groundbreaking. And the movie, the movie's called Pluck. And it's, um, the story of, I mean, this nominated, everyone knows here. It's a story. Saoirse Ronan plays a girl who makes a guitar out of a stove. <laughs> yeah. I saw it's that movie. Absolutely yeah. riveting movie. She Pluck. I mean, the way it was edited, and I'm so glad we finally got to the teasing part, the way it was edited, you really, because a movie like that sounds outlandish, but when you see it, it's absolutely impactful. Yeah. Um, it's absolutely heart-wrenching. It's absolutely devastating in so many different ways for making a guitar out of a stove. Um, it so is devastating. Has, she yeah, if you sacrifice, she has nothing else by which to make her yeah. music. It is yeah. very sad. Yes, she sacrifices cooking for her family to make a guitar and make music. And I think that is what DP, that's what it to be a DP is. And that's what I did with my first family. I made a guitar out, I made a camera, excuse me, I made a camera out of a tissue box. And, um, and that's when my family was like, this girl should be shooting film. And um, yes, I'm from, I'm from Australia where we do, where we make films a little unconventionally. That's why Canon yeah. decided to do this. I emailed Canon and I asked if we could do this and they said, are you on drugs? And I said, yes, in Vienna, we are on drugs. Um, okay, and by and large, huh? Yes. Well, I mean, me and my friends, we are <laughs> okay. all good looking and gorgeous and wear big boots. Oh, cool. So talking about the editing process, I mean, I've watched a couple of your interviews and you kind of talk about how you would edit it. You would shoot it on an Adobe camera, then use the chip from the Adobe camera, plug it into a Canon, yes. and then use the viewfinder on the Canon to slowly edit your clips down until they were sequenced in the right way. And then you would just give that hard drive basically to what? Wow. It's basically you did the work for me. Thank you for explaining it. Um, I knew that it, you've talked about it so much yes, that I just yes, wanted to... That's exactly it. And it was so nice to take a break. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I did this. And um, after... That's why I do have an editing credit on the movie. I, I work with our editor. It's the first time I've ever edited on my own. But it's only because um, I know the camera. And our editor mm. didn't know how to edit on the camera. And I knew the camera. So it was interesting. Mm. Uh, my other question, you know, I, I have some buddies who were in uh, some some other departments on uh, Pluck, and they said they had to schedule time, you know, because the Adobe, uh, the camera also, you know, audition was open for sound and uh, the graphic designers and all the marketing and all the posters were in Photoshop on that camera. I heard <laughs> it was more of a logistical nightmare where you had to edit, you had to schedule time to use the camera. And I wanted to know what that process was like. No, 100%. The movie took eight years. And, and what we did was we basically tr kept, we treated, it was, what was gorgeous was our director, um, um, Kluckingbach. Kluckingbach gave, he- Kluckingbach made Puck, Puck. <laughs> <laughs> Kluckingbach and um, Saoirse Ronan are such a wonderful duo. Yes. They are they a package together. deal. Thank you, Ralph. Yes, that's why it was, it was a lifelong project that Clucky Buck wanted to work on, and he and his inspiration was. Remember back then when we had to travel the film, and we had to travel it from place to place. We oh were passing yeah. it around. And yeah. now we just have a, the Dropbox, or you know. Um. So I. So this time it was like, why don't we go back into the old days, and we each will get the camera for a couple months at a time, use it. Um. Even Sir Ronan used it for a little bit. Um, <laughs> what was she doing on it? <laughs> 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 she she taped the script to the back of the camera and she used it like a like a script. 
So okay. if, how did that work? Because if she's in front of the camera and the script is taped to the back of the camera. Was that just to memorize her lines? Like It was just to filming. memorize the lines when the camera wasn't working. <laughs> the camera has a beautiful way of being like a music stand for an actor. Oh, it, and, has, uh, it has a tripod that comes out of the bottom? <laughs> Yes, the stand. And then that's cool. <laughs> we, yes, so she would put the script there and she'd have it. So that's, it took eight years, Pluck. I heard uh, people were able to play uh, solitaire on the camera too. They had some <laughs> well, pretty basic iPhone games as well. Yes, yes yeah. and that's when we had to start to get regulating with who gets the camera for how many hours. Because um, some of the people, some of the, um, the grips were playing games. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't, and, and that's why I think we lost a good two years. I think we could have made this movie in six years. I yeah, mean, I, I think the behind-the-scenes yeah. set photos uh, say it all, really. It's mm. a picture of you behind the lens of the camera and then a line of 80 people <laughs> behind you waiting to yeah. use the camera. It looks like a Great Depression photo. It's crazy to look at. <laughs> no, it's I gorgeous. also wanted to say I heard that uh, because some of uh, my kids are in school with, uh, I think, the uh, sound mixer on uh, Pluck and they said one day in Calculus, uh, they <laughs> pulled out the Adobe camera as a TI-83, as a, as, a, as a graphing calculator. It's insane that you so guys hired say, that kid yes. to be your sound <laughs> designer. Well, no, well, no, 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 it was the no, kid no, no. of the sound designer. Yes. I think the sound mixer took it and gave yes. it to the kid because there was some sort of trigonometry test. This set us back three weeks. <laughs> and what people don't say is when you're working on a movie for eight years, three weeks is a lot of time. Yeah. And, um, which doesn't sound like it, but yes, yes, a little kid by the name of Leonardo in Austria took the took the camera from our sound mixer and brought it to school for three weeks, and no one noticed. Yeah, yeah, my kids go to school in Austria with their with their mother. Um, <laughs> well, that sounds like a blowjob in a, in in a school uniform. That's if enough. I ever heard one. That's <laughs> enough. A blowjob in a school uniform? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Um, what's up, guys? My name is Sam Cipher. I am a cinematographer. It's so good to see all of you guys. Um, they call me the Sandman because I am really good at shooting deserts. That's where I am on location right now. Um, I'm in Tunisia, and uh, I just I'm 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 the Sandman. I'm they I, call it, you the Sandman because yeah, I'm kind I, of a, I think famously uh, Adam Sandler is known as the Sandman as well. No, there's two D's on mine. Um, cause my oh, first name is Doug. It's so a spelling it's Sand nickname. Demand. Sand, they call me, yeah. Well, that's, and that's my, that's my vanity that's plate. That's your long name. That's my vanity plate, Sand Demand. And, uh, and that's actually S-A-N-D-A-M-A-N, Sand Demand. And, oh, uh, Sand Demand. I have to say, my favorite film of yours was Sec uh, Sex in the City, the movie too. Yes, I did that. I was already in Abu Dhabi when they showed up and they said, let's go. We hadn't thought we needed one of these. Um, and I think we're ready to do it. So, yeah, I just, I love sand. I always have my whole life. I grew up in South Padre Island in Texas, right by the beach. And I've just been just out here. You know, I'm out here in Tunisia right now shooting. I'm shooting a uh, a wacky Dune parody that's coming out. The brothers, the Airplane Brothers are making uh, a parody of Dune called uh, Where the Water At. And uh, it's going to be really fun. It's going to be a spoof. We're getting back to spoofs. It's a little different than the one that I got nominated for, which was, of course, called uh, uh, 480 Hours which was about a uh, women's rugby team that survived in the desert for 480 hours. Such a wonderful movie. A yeah. great beautiful. year for uh, uh, units of time movies being nominated. Mm -hmm. Mine with yeah. 40 days and yours with 480 hours. It's I'll like, what. what is this, a math class? Well, <laughs> I know, right? And, and it's funny because I think as cinematographers, we get horny for time because that means montages. That means passage of time. That mm -hmm. means we set the camera yes. up and we let it go for days. And that's what I love to do. Can't, unless you're going to do something really artistic, the movie couldn't be 480 hours. No, you know, it exactly. Just couldn't be 400. Yeah, yeah, not the ones I'm doing. I can't. I can't really. Yeah, that's not a movie. Now, that's you a said your. Um, can I ask about as a child? So did you primarily want to work with sand, and you found a way in via cinematography, or was it the other way around? Well, Which you predates. Know Tr truthfully, I found a way in because I was really good at cleaning sand out of things. And that's why they use me because I can keep a camera clean from sand. Um, I'm pretty good at what I do as do. well. That's <laughs> very really, huge, actually. I'm going to be that's honest. An, it's you are really a huge hard. asset. I'm a the huge literally asset. First thing of th that was said today that's real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, Look, uh, I think we all you know, know the a truth. A lot of people <laughs> thought your nomination was strange, but it's kind of wonderful. I mean, on the inside, we know what's going on. You got nominated because that sand. That camera had not one single grain of sand in it ever. Exactly, and 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 they don't talk about that at the at the academy. Uh, at the end, they have an academy rep that comes by at the end of shooting your movie, and they check how clean your camera is. Mm. And if your camera's dirty, they of course say, "Well, you didn't do it right," because anybody oh, yeah. can make a movie, right? If if they want to get their camera dirty. Oh, you know? I got fucked so hard by my academy rep once when I did a sand movie. It's hard. Yeah, what did he do? No, we just had good sex. Got fucked so hard. Oh, okay. <laughs> you said your oh, camera was uh, that parentheses clean. parentheses positive. <laughs> okay, No, my camera was dirty. Tone. His camera might, was dirty, but he came yeah. and we really hit it off. Well, look, it's it, but it's fun. And I and I love sand. I love the way sand tells a story because it's, it's much like making a film. It's one tiny piece in an ocean of other things and it creates something beautiful. And uh, that's what I love about it. And that you can do fun things with it. And sometimes you can catch a little snake popping out of it. I love seeing those little snakes. Sometimes they have to say, hey, the actors are up there. And I'm like, well, there's a sign waiter down here and they don't ever want to use it, but I use it for myself. It's mm. so fun to see those little snakes pop out in the desert. You guys got to come out with me. There's a really fun little sign winder that I like to follow. Well, I loved it because there was, so, you know, now thinking about after seeing 480 hours, there was so much snake metaphor and snake symbol there was. There and yeah, snake yeah, yeah. iconography. And now I'm realizing maybe it actually had nothing to do with the film. Well, um, and the director, the director Rosa Rosales was, was so, so excited about uh, snakes. She's covered in snake tattoos. She's so interesting. She's so weird. And she also loves women's rugby and, and, and she loves heat. So this was uh, like her dream project. And as many people know, she has publicly retired because she said, I'm done. I did it. And I still talk to Devastating. her. I, say, hey. I was so excited yeah. for all of her next work. Cause this it's movie crazy. rocked. It was I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. A harrowing performance by Raven Simone in there. Yeah, she really brought it through. And I'm going to be honest, on set, we didn't see it. And then you go back as a cinematographer and you're like, wow, she really was doing things. Uh, she was, she was what we like to say in the business, acting for the Zoom. So when we zoomed in on what she was doing, it was it's kind of like one of those uh, drawings uh, that people make on, on uh, the computer where you zoom in and there's a little tiny world on top of a teapot or whatever. Mm. It's like once you really zoom in on her face, you actually see what's going on. But Brian oh, that's strokes. a great way to describe an actor. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. you some really actors gotta zoom in. are camera actors and some are editing viewfinder actors. They and are. They are. You had different voices, different strokes mm -hmm. for different folks, of course. Well, I cannot Absolutely. wait to talk about actors and acting because, um, you know, that's so interesting to me. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess I'll save that for later. It's a little bit of a teaser. Uh, okay, cool. My okay, name. teaser. Consider me teased. <laughs> like a commercial. Um, my name is Clive J. Uh, I have been nominated for the movie uh, Every Car Can Cry. Um, and I think it's uh, just a wonderful time in my life, a wonderful time in my career to be nominated for something like this. Uh, you know, I put in a lot of work. I put in a lot of years into this. Not, not probably as many as you guys. I'm young. I'm hungry. Um, but I'm really excited about this film, Every Car Can Cry, and for me, I guess the art form was making the car almost as human-like as possible, um, making the car sexy, making the car emotive, making the car uh, a friend, making the car an enemy, um, even though it was just a car. Um, Right. Uh, I And I did see this movie, and I have to be, be honest with you, I am a little surprised to see it nominated because it was basically one long Nissan commercial. Yeah. It, the shots Oof. of the car Oof. were so, I and I mean this in, in a very complimentary way to your work, I, it really made me want to buy that car, but it mm. was very clearly Nissan propaganda. Yeah, I mean, that definitely is a mean thing to say, but I'm going to take it <laughs> on the chin. Uh, you know, we are one of the few, we, we are upfront about it, we are the, one of the first movies, besides the Barbie movie, to basically be nominated for being a good commercial. Um, so this is what we're really excited about, you know, um, Nissan approached us saying we've got this beautiful harrowing story about a man, a woman, and a car. Um, and we want to make- And Nissan came up with the story? It was some, some intern or something pitched it and- Well, they I actually heard the story it. about this because my, one of my other kids is in college and, and, and they said that they're, 
they somehow they kind of did that GameStop thing, but with Nissan, where they filled the internships with creatives and they tipped the scales into turning it into a production company. And mm -hmm. I don't know how they made it happen, but now all of a sudden they look around and Nissan doesn't just make cars, but they make movies, and it's because of the youth. Uh, yeah, I, I I understand it's pretty uh, pretty. Uh... A lot of people have opinions about it, but I just found that working close with the Nissan Kicks was amazing. And to get that close and intimate with a car, somebody, you know, it's kind of a, a cinematographer's dream. The car yeah. doesn't talk back. The tar car doesn't ask questions. What does the car do? The car drives. And the oh, car it's incredible. Parks. Weren't you the kid that I read about in America who did, who went to AFI's kindergarten program? Yeah, so I was in the first class of AFI's kindergarten program. An incredible I, program in LA. Thank you. Yeah, um, my parents, uh, you know, I don't really like to talk about it, but my dad and my mom are actually very well regarded in the industry. Um, my dad is uh, Mel Brooks and my mom is... Uh, Anne Bancroft? <laughs> yeah, Anne Bancroft, yeah. Um, I am I remembering the, this now. This, this bit, is locking direction. into place for me. This makes a lot yeah. of sense. No <laughs> offense. No, no, a problem. I mean, if we've got a problem, we can definitely talk about it because this is the second <laughs> time uh, you've had to say no offense to me, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> no, I am just, I, I'm sorry. Maybe it is a Norwegian thing. I, it is, I am very blunt. I'm very cold. I have no personal beef with you, despite my feelings or otherwise. Okay, yeah, that doesn't really answer anything. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I've got a question. I mean, we teased it well, a little wait, bit. Well, wait, i got to ask you something a little bit about this AFI kindergarten program because I was following that too. I was actually uh, – I, I was on the board because um, <clears throat> I went to AFI, of course, and I was I was following it, and it was actually a scientific study, and there were some, some film scientists that were following it because uh, – there's that saying it you you put everyone in an, in an intro film class and all the movies you get are about shooting and drugs and sex, uh, no matter what. And that usually we're like, well, that's because they're 18 year olds. But we tried it with five year olds <laughs> and the movies were about shooting and drugs and sex. Yeah. And I wow. wanted to know. Yeah. Uh, my first short film was called uh, Kindergartner Doing Coke. And it was <laughs> right. an amazing exploration of what it, a world where. Rather than books, we have Coke. Um, and... <laughs> instead of books, instead of books, it's Coke. Yeah. So Wait, insane. did you bring a yeah. little bit of that footage? I I am seeing yeah. something mm. in the Dropbox. We should watch uh, it. I mean, it it built you to where you are today. I don't think you would be nominated for an Oscar without this this incredible replacement with books to Coke. No, yeah, because this out. was actually you, they have student Oscars that they give out to. Uh, grad students and university students this is a kindergarten oscar i was nominated for a kindergarten oscar that year um so yeah we can watch a clip this is uh kids uh kids doing coke hey have you read this newest cocaine it's quite a grain turner yeah uh, i've read it teacher gave it to me to read with my nose well i brought some coke from home that came from my older sister, who's now in third grade. I smoke cigarettes after sex all day. I'm a drug lord, and I'm going to kill you. All baby I see is cut snow. Baby shark I cut my skin, baby I smoke shark my cigarette, baby I read shark. my cocaine. Baby this is how things are. I can't see in front of me, all I see is fucking snow. So yeah, the movie itself was super avant-garde. Uh, yeah, it was so why I think direct to camera, I really like that. Direct to camera. Kind of just a Did montage. I see a cameo by young Sam Levinson in there? That was a young <laughs> Sam Levinson. Good wow, eye. Wow, that eye. rocks. That was a young Sam Levinson who doesn't I love act. Sam. He's so loud. <laughs> but he was in kindergarten with me. And uh, yeah, so that got me a lot of traction and kind of put me on the right, uh, right trip, you know, to start working on some real things. Because, you know, by first grade, second grade, you're growing out of the Cokes, drugs, and guns and moving into a different field. Um which is mostly uh, pieces about sex workers and prostitution. Um, but we don't have a clip of that, I don't think. So, yeah, my question for <laughs> no. you guys. They said no. The guys over there are saying no, no, no. Who are those guys, by the way? <laughs> I don't know. He's saying no. 
Yeah. <laughs> anyway, my question for you guys was, you know, uh, you know, a lot of cinematographers struggle with working with actors and working with uh, people. How do you guys feel about working with actors? Do you guys have an approach and a method? I know you guys, I mean, why most of us are hired is because we're really good at making actors look sexy. That is a big yeah. thing and a big reason a lot of cinematographers get hired is because they make people look good. Either, so, either we make them look sexy or we make them look old. Yes, yeah, sexy because I've or seen old. some incredible yeah, hags. Old you hags. Yes, incredible. And we either don't sexy tell or them. old. We don't tell them if we're going to make them look old. We tell them we're going to make them look sexy every time, no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really important. You know, and it's funny. We know as cinematographers the good side of everyone's face and the bad side of everyone's face. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Maybe I'll name a couple actors. Jennifer Lawrence. Let's all say right. it at the same time. Right. Right. Right, right side. Sorry. That's all right. That's her good side. Um, Coleman Domingo. Easy. Right. Left. Right. Oh. Oh. Wait. Oh, no. I'm thinking of a different Coleman Domingo from Austria. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. That famous oh, Coleman Domingo. Course, okay. He's good on the, she's good on the left. Oh, yeah. Robert De Niro. Left. 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 Because he's Brad got that Pitt. mole on the right. Brad, Brad Pitt. Of course. Uh, Gina Roger. Oh. Brad Pitt. Every side. Every, every side. Both sides. Every side. Uh, and Hathaway. Up. 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 You shoot her, you, you shoot her you like shoot a her CCTV. Up. You shoot her you like shoot a closed up. circuit. Mm -hmm. And Ian McKellen, a uh, from below. Down. From, from below. below. Always. From give below. Him, always give him, from below. Give, make him height. Make him height. Yeah. Give him height. You, you know? shoot him where the voice comes from is what I like to say with Ian. That's really fun. I'm you say that just that. with that actor. Just with Ian, shoot him where the voice <laughs> comes from. Because honestly, he's a, he's, he's a, he's a conduit to the voice. We love the face, but... Come on, it's the voice. Well, you know? Doug, I have a question just, for everybody here. Oh, no, no. No, I was just going to say, Doug, I mean, like, in 48, 480 hours, I think you do yeah. a fantastic job of shooting a whole rugby team. I mean, can you talk yeah. about how you shot that one scene when uh, they are playing rugby? It's the titular scene, a titular moment when they find the joy of rugby in the desert again. Um, yeah. Yeah, totally. So so we start on a picture of the sand. The sand is pristine. The sand is clear. And we had to clean the sand. We actually washed this sand, which is a very specific technique that I use. And we made the sand. So we, the, shart, the shart starts on the sand. And, I'm and then sorry. You, see, you said shart. Don't talk about it, dude. I feel like I'm you with my kids again. You said shart. I okay, feel we like shart. I have to... That's we someone start to say shart in an interview is only someone who would be the father of four blowjobs. Shut up. I have three beautiful kids. I don't I don't even presume to make think I've made a fourth blowjob. I start the shot. Okay? Okay. I'm nominated for an Oscar. I Listen, start the shot. Shart, hey. father of blowjobs, please continue with your I'm Stop. I'm not even joking around right now. Stop. Okay? I shart this shut the fuck up. I okay, start the sorry. shot. I start the shot. Talk about shart. washing all the sand then. So Talk I shart the sand. Shut my shart. Fuck. <laughs> shart. Shart my ass. Sharted my fucking blowjob ass. <laughs> Fuck. Shart. I sharted my sharting. I shart. Look, we taped a GoPro to the fucking rugby ball, okay? Can we get over it and move on? I don't even like this. I'm not even liking this right now. I can't even okay. get my fucking lid on my water bottle either, and I've been doing that See, for minutes. Okay, I, I apologize. I apologize. I feel like we were trying to make a little joke. It went a yes, little it, too it, far. It, it, it went, went a little, a little too, far. too far. America is different for Joralf and I. Um, but I'll say this. What the listeners and the students watching and listening should know that what just happened right there was what we call a DP panic. <laughs> and when a DP panics on set... Um, it's, it is a moment. It's a moment that we all, it happens to all of us on set. Mm -hmm. I don't have those moments on set. I'm great on set. And we do a raffle, like me and the crew, we do a raffle every single day and somebody wins like $300 every day. Like you write your name on a $5 That's bill. Well, I don't, and I like, am concerned I do, about the budget. Where do you have time for a raffle on the call sheet? Where do you put the raffle? You put fucking $5 in a bucket and write your name on it and you do it at the end. You got five no, minutes, you are, dude. You are, with all due respect, having a DP panic at the moment. Moment. I'm DP not panic. having a DP panic. DP panics, uh, I just want to get my fucking different ways. And... Watch the fucking water bottle, dude. I'm trying to put the lid on it, and every time I spin it, it's not even it's not even clicking in. That and that's is... what's that's like crazy your, about panic. it. Your camera hands are freaking out because of the DP panic. All the blood the is rushing panic. to your fingertips, okay. and you're yeah. not able to use it. Okay. My DP panic manifests uh, inward, so oh, all does. of my organs run cold. 
and uh, <laughs> my my blood sort of reverses direction, and I can feel it inside me going wrong. So it, you can feel like your liver wrong. getting a little cold, or your yes, I can go oh gallbladder. It's sort of like you know how Russians have uh, forty seven words for snow or yeah. whatever, yes, yes, and yes. we have less. Uh, Norwegians we just have snow. feel cold, <laughs> yes, in uh, more ways than Americans can feel cold. It is sort of the way language maps our cognitive thinking is actually quite fascinating. But um, yes, it, and when the panic sets in, when the shot is wrong, you feel it in your whole body. And I'm sure we've all felt something like that. Sure. Mm, yes. I remember I had a deep panic because I put, I had a lens. Doug, are you good over there? No, I'm still working on this fucking water. You know what? I'm going lidless. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry for the clicks oh. and clacks. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, yeah. You don't need that. Ca the, what are you? Yeah. Um. So anyway, yeah, I had a DP panic with um, when Saoirse Ronan was um, she was in the middle of the oven opening it up. And, and, and this is where the crux of the movie where she finds that the middle of the oven, there's a G string and <laughs> That's a huge moment in the movie. And that was when I didn't have, um, I didn't have my, my grip that I love to work with um, by the name of Benjamin Button. His name first, not the movie first. Um, just normal guy though, doesn't have anything weird. Benjamin Button's my favorite grip to work with in Austria. And he wasn't on set that day, I had a replacement. And then I, we put in the wrong lens. I didn't like the aspect ratio. I didn't like the light. I couldn't fix the light. I could not fix the light. I, I needed more time. I could not get more time. See, I'm getting, I'm getting flustered just now yeah. talking about it. And then sure enough, I said, I said, I need five. You need to send talent away. I am not ready for Saoirse Ronan to go inside the oven and find the G-string yet. I can't I light so it glad, I'm so glad you were able to work through it, though, because that scene where she figures out she can use the G-string to string the guitar yeah. is one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever seen in cinema. It's so the crux really of the film. So I'm really glad you got that shot. Thank you so much. But it was hard. I had, because our first AD sent talent in like I was ready, like I was pre-lit. And let me tell you, I don't pre-light anything. I'm working with what God has given me that day, because also I'm a Christian. I should have mentioned that in my intro. So I, I work with the you don't have to disclose you don't your religion to. You in the to. intro. Really I should have, no, I should have explained it. I should. I don't know how we got on the you wrong. You don't have explain. to apologize. No, I it doesn't change said it. anything you've said. <laughs> Absolutely, oh, nothing has my... been affected. <laughs> <laughs> you can be. I am. I am supportive of your Christian beliefs. Yes, yeah, fine. It's fine. Absolutely. No, but I feel like I doesn't. It, I should have said it in the beginning. Um, Are you anyway, having a little DP panic right now? A little bit, but that. Uh, what about you, Clark? Have you had a DP panic? Or are you too cool and young? Well, the thing is, they taught us at AFI Junior um, how to kind of deal with DP panic pretty early on. So that was kind of a gift to me. It was kind of a blessing in disguise because at that age, you're having a lot of DP panic and just growing panic. Um, they turned it into a song, didn't they? I mean, mm -hmm. I remember seeing that. Yeah, so you saw that uh, you, you you've been looking at our YouTube videos, apparently. Um, well, I was on the board, right? Yes, he said so, he was on the board. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, we turn it into a song, and it goes. Uh, what they taught us is, um, <clears throat> uh, sorry about this, my singing voice. I'm a DP, not a singer. Um, it's okay. Sing it like a kid, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all good. Sing it like a kid, though. All good. Please sing it like a kid. <laughs> all good. Yeah. Oh, good. No worries. Sing it like a kid, if you can. It's oh, okay. Good. Take Please. your time. Take your time. Just sing it like a kid, though. <laughs> Take your time. No pressure. Sing it like a kid. On your schedule, like a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Just have fun with it, like a child. And go whenever you're ready on your go, like a kid. If you're having a panic and feeling really blue, step outside and touch your shoe. Look up at the sky and feel real good Cause this panic will be over in just two minutes And then 120, 119, 118, 117, 116, 115, 114, 113, 112, 111, 110, 109, 108, 107, 106, 105, 104, 103, oh, 102 101 100 
That's the song. That's where you wow. end. <laughs> wow. 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 That oh. was amazing. I The thing I love about that song is it gave us all time to get up, grab a glass of water, <laughs> charge our phones. It was nice. I mean, it settled all everybody in. All of you got in. up at one point. All of you got up at one point for well, sure. Well, that's what's so good about that song yeah. because you you give the whole, every department time to reestablish their ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it, it actually it's really good. smart. Because, you know, uh, traditional anxiety attack uh, remedies don't work on DPs, right? Because as soon as you start with five things you can see, it's like, ah, ah, more panic. That's the yeah, problem. Exactly. What we're seeing I'm is seeing, the problem. I'm seeing the lights that are rigged wrong. I'm seeing the actor who's in darkness. Yeah, you don't want to see that stuff. I don't want to see that. I also mm -hmm. want to say, too, Clark, you know, I, I, I saw, you know, I was kind of there when the song was being written. I remember thinking, you know, when you hear it, it's like, oh, just counting down from 120. But teaching five-year-olds the intricacy in differences <laughs> between those numbers, it's so nuanced. That's part and of the yes, thing that like calms the 40s, us down. It yeah. felt like in the 40s, it gets to dissonant notes. Well, yeah, and then and the countdown the starts, 20s, the countdown the starts on... The very sexy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the countdown starts on 14, which is not intuitive, right? So <laughs> so I think I think it's very interesting. And I remember how long you guys worked on that. Mm -hmm. It took years. It took, honestly, most of kindergarten just to get past to 99. Because, uh, again, you're forgetting how hard it is for children at five to count down. They yeah. only know up to about 10 or 15. Oh, yeah. but I mean, yeah. side note, I think it's even harder for a children to make a movie and be a cinematographer. That's why I never yeah. really understood. I'll say it. I'm going to say it. I've never understood AFI kindergarten. I never, I, thought, under, I never understood why they didn't ban lens flares. I'll tell you that much because there are so many of those in those movies. I'm well, on the board. What can is, I say? You know, we have a whole, uh, you know, that's a thing. It's uh, when you hit kindergarten, first grade, it's a bunch of lens flare short films. <laughs> Uh, these kids so are nice. really interested. It's about the age that you like space um, yeah. and trucks. And uh, that's about when you get to lens flares, uh, is space and trucks. But yeah, it's actually, uh, it was a beautiful song to learn. And it's actually helped me so much on set. Um, and just counting down and having to memorize that song really calms you down. I feel like um, even calmer Great job. now. Uh, uh, you know, I, I did have a, I had a question for everybody, if that's all right. You know, when there's... um. An, a director, I think we probably all work with somebody that uh, is asking for something that they can't visualize, right? Difficult they ask directors. Difficult, difficult directors. They can be. They they have a, a something in their mind, but they have no idea of the equipment we're using. We we're the practical uh, people behind the dreams, right? Like we're the ones who have to run the dolly. We're the ones who have to uh, really make these cameras capture an entire, you know, town doing a drag race. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's hard. So what have you guys dealt with? Have you ever dealt with, uh, some impossible requests? Mm. 
Yes, well, I worked on an all GoPro movie, and oh, that no. was oh, a disaster. Mm. Sounds like well, college in Vienna. <laughs> oh, I, it does, I don't huh? even, as a European, I understand exactly what you mean. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Must be a European centric thing, yeah. They wanted me. It was a Weather Channel documentary back when they were trying to do Weather Channel Plus. They wanted yeah. new content to fill out their streaming slate. Uh, it did not work. It was like CNN Plus. Nobody cared. Uh, but they wanted me to go inside of a tornado, right? And mm. in order to get a 360 uh, glance, what we had was a bunch of GoPros in a ring around my head. And I was basically just spinning in this cyclone, just sort of getting all... And I felt like I was a tripod. I was no longer mm. a cinematographer in that moment. I was a tripod caught in a storm. Oh. And I think we just have to say no to these unconventional mm. cameras. They are giving me a headache. That was oh. for the Bratz two live action movie right that's what you shot that for on for the weather channel yes <laughs> weather, weather channel, channel plus, was yeah. working with brats uh two and they really wanted to do some artsy shit right i wow. took a meaning for that yeah they that wanted was, the yeah. dolls yes it, it, it was a very uh hard concept to get on board with most of the meetings were us just going so wait what is this again yeah that and sounds like europe I, yeah, uh, I did hear the internally. I know exactly what you mean. I did hear internally. European DPs, yeah, that is what you guys are doing. Wait, what yeah. is this again? A it's lot. always. I mean, and I you will never say, want to feel like a tripod. Never. No. I'm so sorry you felt like a tripod. I will just say I did hear kind of behind the scenes on the Weather Channel. I know that once they started a streaming service, there was somebody in the room that just screamed, "We need an IP," and I think they got brass. <laughs> and so, uh, yes. Well, rumor <laughs> has it they used all of the pot to fund that to buy the brass yeah they IP. went all in and then i know they didn't even end up releasing that movie which was a bummer because you worked so hard on it and then they just made a a, a live cam and they stuck some brats in a monsoon didn't they and mm -hmm. they, they you could just watch dolls get pelted by rain mm -hmm. i was disappointed to see that <laughs> well i think interesting enough just going into that i feel like they realized their ip was weather <laughs> um, which was so interesting that right. they're, they kind of had an intellectual property and ownership of weather, yeah, which is really, yeah. really interesting for me. Yes, they're not taking advantage of the weather IP. There are so many things you can do with it. Totally. And his IP, that's God's IP. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can do I'm a lot a of stuff. I'm a Christian. I just put Again, man, doesn't put man anything. after any of those, you know what I mean? Rain They're man. IP well, man. I guess Rain Man doesn't oh, work. Oh, okay. I guess you run into something. Uh, okay, man. we've hit a roadblock. Snowman. Oh, no. We've hit another roadblock. Snowman. Oh, no, no, it's been done. Snowman. Oh, no. I guess it's all been done, so I get it now. The Thundermans. Oh, shit. Oh, no. shit. Okay, never mind. All right. Well, this is why we are the DPs and not the right. executives, right? We film the ideas. We don't have them. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Exactly. Yes. Oh, I don't like to have ideas. I just like to. I like. I love when a director just puts his two, two fingers out. She puts her two fingers out. She goes, I want to see this. Um, for the listeners, I'm just sticking my two fingers out like a peace sign. And you put it down like a pancake. And you go, this is, this is what I want. And then I see it. I get to see like that's the frame. I like to find frames. I can't have an idea. Mm -hmm. Like my, my husband the other day, he asked me um, what I wanted for dinner. I had to think of an idea for dinner. And I said, what about... And I named the street in Austria to the other street. I gave him a frame, oh, right? Geez. And I get, I said, pick a restaurant on those streets because I'll frame it, but I won't think of it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's a really good idea. I'm going to definitely steal that. Um, you know, I had a really tough director one time. Uh, it was really tough. Uh, I was working, uh, and I don't want to name names, but she's a fantastic director. But it's tough when they don't understand the limitations of a camera. She said she wants to start in a two-shot push into a close-up and then push up into her brain and i said that's impossible that sounds like animation it's and that's what i explained to her i said this will need to be cgi this will need to be animation she no. said no we're going to capture her brain in camera and i said one we'd have to open her up two we can't light a brain there's no light in a skull it's dark in there so we went back and forth for a long time trying to figure that out. Um, oh, the they don't talk about how dark the brain is. You can't light that thing for shit. And it's no. tough Because I know us. that Grey's Anatomy, I heard this uh, from a, a buddy of mine who was working for Shonda Rhimes, but uh, uh, Grey's Anatomy was uh, running out of 
of material after 20 years. They were looking into seeing if they could get those little cameras that they put in the mm -hmm. colonoscopy to yeah. see if they could get, uh, and they were having little internal discussions of, okay, well, what is the feasibility of getting a little gaffer inside of the brain to maybe light it? Yeah, and I heard that. They were trying to put a little camera and a little gaffer in there. They were trying to find the smallest person <laughs> in the world. I heard they were trying to, 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 to do the shrink ray technology <laughs> yeah. first. And well, then... And then once they couldn't do shrink ray, I heard they were trying to train praying mantises, which just and those no. guys are so territorial, and they were they were they were fighting all mm -hmm. the time. I mean, talk about well, they difficult keep actors. Getting their heads bitten off. They're yeah. not good workers. Yeah. They no. can't deal with no. another difficult yeah. personality on set. Don't bring a praying mantis into it. They please, are nothing please. but confrontational. Let me tell you. You know what's more <laughs> useless than a DP who has COVID, who can't come in that day? A praying mantis with a camera. <laughs> For me, that's almost equal. Yeah, a, a it's DP very with COVID, close. It's basically DP with COVID, the same or thing. a praying mantis with an attitude is basically the same thing. I mean, <laughs> this is the kind of stuff you can only talk about with other DPs. I don't know. Gets Nobody it. else gets it. Can this. only bro out like this. Oh, it's nice to Good. bro out. Do you guys ever call the top of your water bottle a lens cap? No. No, I don't. Um, not at all. Must be. I, religious I guess thing. it's a Christian that, no. thing. I guess it's a Christian thing. <laughs> Maybe it's Christian. If it's not Christian, it's Austrian. If it's not Austrian, it's a DP thing. And it's not a DP thing, so it must be one of those, right? And that's me. Sort this episode. Of a, a BuzzFeed <laughs> quiz. Which of these personality traits are you? Um, I I guess. Uh, is there a time? Is it ever hard to turn it off? I know mm. you are talking about the lens cap and the water bottle, which I can't uh, personally relate to, but, <laughs> but are there any times when you are Ooh, going about your everyday life and you just cannot stop running through shots and time coding in uh, your head? Yes. Does that ever happen? I mean, I can say I'm sure all of us have experienced the, fe the feeling and the sensation when you're having sex and you actually sell it, say out loud, I wish I could shoot this. Oh my gosh, <laughs> how many times I've thought that. Oh well, my gosh. And, I mean, you do have it within your power to shoot a sex tape. I will say, I have tried it. It and took me 16 hours. And here's the teaser hours. release. Here's the teaser release. Keep here going. Is. This is the second they're going to clip for the video. Okay, so let's do it. Let's get into it. It took, you know, as a DP, I'll reframe it so you can clip it as a video. <laughs> oh, my God. As a DP, it's really hard for me to shoot the sex tape. Because it takes forever to light it, and by then my partner is no boner is gone, and they don't <laughs> want to do it anymore. Oh, when your partner is no boner. Well, it's difficult, because if I were to shoot a sex scene, I, of course, wouldn't want to be in it, you know? No, so I'm <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I really want to shoot this, and I head out of there. And I say, we got to get somebody else. And of course, who's it going to be? It's somebody who's good on all angles. It's Brad Pitt. I call Brad up. I say, look, I'm having an inkling for a project. He says, this is disgusting. This is depraved. This is weird. But I, it's hard for me. But you know, you I will have say. his phone number. That's the win. I have me. his WhatsApp. I have his WhatsApp. And I call him on WhatsApp. Okay. And it's jarring for him. And it's jarring for me because I never use it like that. But I will say, I, you know, I, a lot of the, the lighting right now that a lot of the kids are having, the kind of sexy lighting you can buy on TikTok, that stuff looks great in the room. And sometimes when I light one of those galaxy lights, you know, and I'm having sex with my beautiful wife, I think about... I think about, man, I wish I could see what this looks like. But mm. some things, you know, sometimes you leave it to God as the DP. You well, let that's, God light you know, it, for you me, know? At, that's a point where I say, and, and we learned this in, uh, you know, AFI Junior, pretend your eyes are a camera. And it really helps mentally. Sometimes I'll just go, you know what? I wish I could film this. I am filming this with my eyes. Yes. Um, and it's Do really guys, helpful. Yes. You guys, my problem with my husband is when I ask for more haze during sex. That's mm. usually our biggest problem because sometimes I want to feel the screen. Yeah, meaning you'll get my coffee. vision. You'll get very coughing attacks. That's oh yes, quick. and I just go more haze, more haze, yeah. and well, it it just kills the boner. And I'll say too, my wife, you know, she doesn't like when I hyperfixate on the little things. I hyperfixate on her grabbing the sheets. I hyperfixate on her biting her lip, and she says, "Look at my tits." <laughs> she says, "Hey, look at my tits. Look at my look at you know, like focus on what you're supposed to be doing down there." You know, I, know. I mean, and as I'm, a and woman, you know. as a woman with tits, if you're not looking at my tits and you're looking at my hand holding the pillow, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I hear you, and she hears you too, and mm. she gets pissed at me for. But sure. I'm a Christian. I've never seen tits except my own. Okay. <laughs> I think a lot of Christians have seen other you know, people's tits. I always get complaints from my girlfriend. I'm I'm trying to capture. I'm trying to think too much about the emotional state she was just in before the sex. Um, oh, the moment had. before. Yeah. 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 Like, what is she going through? What is this feeding towards in her story and her plot line? 
Clark, Man. are you one of the DPs that likes to watch rehearsal before you light it? Absolutely, I love oh. to watch rehearsal. If so you don't even are... you don't even know what the shot is when you're in when you're in production. Do you know what how you're going to no. shoot something? You wait I for the actors. I show up with a pen and a paper and uh, kid picks on my computer, and we do it there. Kid uh, picks. Yeah, we learned it in AFI Junior. It's great. I, I just have never Kid moved picks. off of it. Kid picks. I guess yeah. that's a hard. You know, every person when they work in a career, they kind of get attached to the first software they use. So if Kid Picks yeah. is your first software, I guess you're gonna Makes be sense. using it a lot. Yeah, a lot of. I got so attached to Photo Booth. I got oh, yeah. so attached oh, to Photo yeah. Booth. Clark, yeah. I think so you were the one I saw. Your laptop and turning it around to take photos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You do. You sometimes have to return to what you know, and sometimes yes. I do the little roller coaster background. The roller coaster. <laughs> oh, yeah. I shot my college thesis on roller coaster background in oh, iPhoto. Oh, shut up! Really? Yes. Shut up! And I think it was actually pretty good. I will say I'm not much of a writer, so the dialogue was described as a little frenetic Ugh. and insane. But uh, the actual shots of the roller coaster felt real and authentic and true, and that's what it, my professor said. It was it was hell having to write in film school uh, uh, as oh cinematographer. So I just want to shoot the thing. Let me guess: Did all of us write something where uh, you it starts with somebody waking up and hitting an alarm clock? <laughs> yes. A quintessential <laughs> shot we've all shot. But how good was that shot of the what? insert of the alarm clock? It's, it's good. so good. Was it's your clock? Good. Did your clock have numeric orders that were red? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my numbers. Yeah, seven o'clock. Yes. And I'll tell numeric you, my orders. twist. My twist. Uh, did you big, do six fifty nine? I yeah, I did six fifty. I did six fifty nine into seven. And oh, uh, oh, my my big oh, twist was oh. uh, the monster hand hitting the alarm. Big claw. Oh, Clark oh, that's J. good. Clark J, were you the one that I saw uh, on? Uh, I just read somewhere or on Deadline that you would watch da dailies on a leapfrog. Yeah, so I watch dailies on a leapfrog. It's the only way that they they put the dailies on the monitor and then they have a cord that just goes right to my leapfrog learning. Like an HDMI um, into the leapfrog? HDMI <laughs> right into the leapfrog learning. So while I'm watching the dailies, I can also figure out the letters behind the dailies. Um, yeah. So it's That's cool, like awesome. me. We did this on the, on the cam on the Canon at some point. We started putting the call sheet on the computer, on the, on the mm. camera. So you didn't even know what time your call time was until you had the camera in front of you. <laughs> In the desert, we put ours inside a cooler, um, just so you can when you the video village is you open a big igloo cooler. I've I've heard that it. your cameras are free of sand but covered in water all the time. Just the monitors. The cameras are completely free, but the monitors Got are it. filthy Got wet. It. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. They don't check the monitors of the academy. Well, that actually brings up a good point. The uh, the alarm clock thing is, uh, you know, I'm a fan. You guys love or hate an unnecessary uh, insert. Uh, you know, when somebody's mm. opening the door and all of a sudden we're seeing the hand reach for the door slowly, it almost feels robotic and completely out of the place. Do you guys like that or hate that? I hate what you just said, unnecessary, because who decides something is unnecessary? Yeah. The storyteller doesn't get to decide what is, what is necessary or not. Clark, can I tell you why I hated that so much? Because I really despise okay. what you said. Yeah. Uh -huh. Clark, uh, I would yep, say that... I would say that life is inserts, right? Life is moments between establishing shots. Inserts are what get us from A to B. If you focus on the main thing being the action, you're ignoring the moments of opening the door, the moments mm. of going up the I stairs, the moments. I mean, uh, yeah, it's just really ignorant what you said, and it kind of sucks ass. Said. Yeah, I mean, for me, I hated absolutely it. The reason wrong, that but okay, I you go hated ahead. it was Clark, Clark, because Shh. Rolf is saying what he hated about what you said. So the reason I hated it is because we as a society. Do not look at our hands enough. Yeah. And movies really point the camera literally and figuratively towards, have you ever looked at what your hand looks like when it's picking up the phone? No, you don't think about that because you are not present. And mm. movies really remind us like, oh, maybe I should be looking at my feet when I walk there. Maybe I should be looking at my arms when I'm grabbing this. And people are only looking at face, 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 face. This is hideous to me. I think that faces are hideous. Yeah, they suck. I mean, okay. they're bad, and they're so totally. boring. It's all we see usually. Absolutely. Big revelation in the last five minutes here um, that you guys <laughs> hate faces. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, well, I do... Well, we don't have time to get into every body part we hate. How is everyone feeling about getting potentially that shiny trophy? I oh. don't know if it's everyone's first time. Is this 
I it's my first time, certainly. I, d yeah. I some of you may have been around the block. I can't quite remember. I've been nominated a few times. I will say, you know, I I would be excited. I am also nervous because I think if I bring that thing to the desert, the power of the sunlight might reflect off of it and hurt somebody. Ooh, it seems I'm, hard to hold. Makes me nervous and it gets hot in the desert. So I just don't logistically know how I, it'd be kind of a burden to have it as a statue. And oh, I, it is be, making me be annoying to have it's an making Oscar. me nervous to think about having to do something with it. Yeah. Where would mm. I put it? Will it get too hot? Will it melt? Well, listen, I have one. I have one and I'm in heat, hot climates a lot and it doesn't. I, I just I just put it in a Ziploc bag. So maybe you could okay. do that, Doug. I got yeah, I mine, could try that. I Ziploc got kind of plastic ago. melts, too. I just want to say. But yeah, sure. Mm, I'm nah, not in Vienna. But, you know, I sure, really... I'm in Tunisia, for the record. Yeah, it is different uh, than Vienna. I'm not in Vienna. I'm a Christian. But I, I will say that <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I got a I got my Oscar for when we read. Like, we redid the proposal with Sandra Bullock, but in Vienna. Yeah. And I got the Oscar in Vienna. for Best it. international film. I remember that. The pre yes. The proposal Austria is what it was called. <laughs> and yes. And I got it. It sweeped its award. So I guess it got one award. Um, yes, it's sweeped with one, um, but it it was incredible. And I'll say I was young at the time, and I did not know what I was going, what I what what I was doing. This time, I'll say it's something special about knowing the nominees and knowing yeah. their films. Like I know you guys, I know a Ralph Jenkins shot. I really do. Yes, mm. yes, of and course, it's, because it's it just is covered in glitter and little hearts. That is how you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, I uh, first time nomination. Very excited. Uh, very, I feel like it's a, almost a gift for me to be nominated uh, with such a magnanimous cruise. You know, just uh, to mirror that, I know what a glitter shot feels like. It feels disorienting, and you can almost hear the accent in it, uh, which is amazing. I did. That felt racist to me. Uh, the way you are talking. Yeah, about I didn't really my, enjoy that. The the way that something is. You know what I. I am choosing to be the bigger person because I am not afraid to admit that I am excited, right? Mm. I have a little uh, car seat in my passenger seat just in case I win so I can strap in the trophy. It's and a little I haunting. Think I'm not it's actually kind of haunting to hear that. A small, <laughs> a small, yes, a baby with a, a person with a car seat without the child. You might haunting. want it too much at this point. I, if you I'd love to shoot that because it would be a Hemingway-esque tragedy, I think. I, I'd love what to shoot something What is the something problem? Like it, say I go home without it. I put it on Facebook Marketplace. A car seat for Oscar never won. What is the problem? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, maybe I click on that. <laughs> There's nothing tragic about that. It is simply life. It is expositional. It is what happened. God, I want to shoot that. God, I want to shoot that so bad. Do you oh, ever see bad. something horrible and sad and go, oh fuck? I mm -hmm. wish. I wish. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I saw an old lady fall on the streets of Vienna, and it was it, the light was sh cutting. The light was cutting through. Yeah, and. It was heartbreaking. I saw a rat cry. cry I saw a rat cry in a nightclub, and oh my god! I wish what I would have given to shoot a short film about that. Do you know whether what rat was crying? Was it just too drunk or what? <laughs> he was going too drunk. A up or <laughs> he had a little bottle was next to him. Up? He was sort of well. I could tell because there was another rat girl, sort of going like, "You got this," uh, and okay. so you could sort of tell that it was more of a chemical alcohol reaction than like yeah. it probably wasn't really about that. It was yeah. probably a greater problem, right? Oh, but it's I weird. didn't have time to get into it. It's yeah. weird. None of you asked me why the woman fell. Or why'd she fall? Uh, okay. Why did she fall? I, I don't she just know. Fell. I just saw the moment, but you okay. only asked why the rat was crying. Well, it seems like just, a, a, you know, for a woman to fall, it sounds like an accident. It sounds like something to happen. You didn't say she was pushed. You kind of just gestured that she fell. So that is a cut and dry, open, closed case for Look, rat her, to be crying in a nightclub. If you'd like to keep talking, we'll give you the, a lot of questions. We'll, we'll give you the platform, Glitter, if you'd like to continue being perceived or whatever. I don't know. I don't know if you want to keep going. What does that mean? Look, one thing I just want to say, uh, something I wish I could have shot, something really fucked up and sad. My kids got uh, lice and I had oh, the to- Oh, blowjobs. Uh, 
shut the fuck up. I had I've to wash I've never seen their... a blowjob with a piece of white in That's, his hair. Listen, it's a bug. What are you talking a bug about? In, in the You're hair losing of a blowjob. You guys are bending over backwards to try to turn my kids into blowjobs, and I won't let it happen. Well, All we I'm saying turn is, turn them into blowjobs. Shut the hell we up. We aren't the blowjob here. If they anything, were born blowjobs. No, I don't know what you mean. Any, no, <laughs> you know what? From now on, do not call my kids blowjobs. If anything, you can call them vagina jobs, and that's all because they were they were. Yuck, I, I don't like that one. I and don't that's like exactly. that. Kind of blow job. I'm a Christian. No. I won't say vagina blow jobs. I'm a Christian. Vagina is a thing. You can you can eat somebody out. You don't call it a vagina job. And I'm not Cut calling it that. I'm saying I penetrated my wife and and I ejaculated into her and I created my children. So you can call this them. This is a, way. Hmm. This is Z, way and so then we, maybe I we don't talk, talk about, about it. As a Christian and an Austrian, this is where I, I shut my ears. Listen, all I, I wanted to say was... I put the onto my eardrums. So I put the shampoo on their hair, and I was washing it, and I was watching these lice die, and I was like, man, I wish I had a tiny jib so I could just get in there with a the crane, and I could just <laughs> span over all of these lice, just fucking grasping for their life. I really wish I could have seen that, because in a way, when you get that close, hair is kind of like sand in the desert. That's oh, all I wanted you know to what? say. Mm. Now I feel like a dick because that was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And wouldn't you have liked to have seen that? And I actually, I went on Craigslist and I tried to find a non-union praying man just to help me with that. And guess what? I got no! a lot of, I got a Never lot of fucking it. nasty emails. What's worse than a praying mantis? A non-union praying mantis. I'll no, tell you that much. They will do anything for the job. It's, it's what's worse? It's devastating. Then a praying mantis with a camera. A dead praying mantis because you have to clean up the body. Yeah, that's a good point too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, something I saw that was devastating that I really, 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 really wanted to shoot. We were in uh, 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 a small Bangladeshi forest, and I saw a man get eaten alive uh, by a tiger. Ooh. And uh, I don't know. I just wanted to shoot it. Anyway, uh, fuck, Mary kill. Two shot, <laughs> close up, or wide shot? Oh. oh, this is an industry question. It's been asked this time, is a very time and time again. This is, this is the martini of the questions. Anyway, oh of course, of course. Well, you gotta fuck the wide shot, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 it's yeah. so delicious to me. Uh, I want to marry the two shot. I think that is the, the sort of practical, the SUV, the family sedan, if you will, of shots. And uh, I want to kill the close-up. I don't want to know that much about the actor. Oh. I disagree. I'm gonna I disagree. disagree. Yeah, I disagree. I'm disagree. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be marrying the close-up because I want to wake up next to that my whole life, and mm. I want to get the shot. You know. Wow. Uh, I'm gonna be a fucking the two shot because that's what fucking is. And it's two, <laughs> and then I am gonna Never kill the Never had an, or an orgy. I'm not interested in that. No, I ha I fucked have children, so that's. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, Doug, wow. you fucked so that blowjob. No, kids no blow jobs. I get blowjobs. Fuck you fucked Doug. to get blowjobs. Oh you fucked for blowjobs. That's you fucked oh to produce blowjobs. I'm getting so mad. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, sing the song. Uh, 120, 119, 118. Let's all do it together. 117, 116, 115, 115, 115, 115, 115, 115, 115, 115, 115, 115, 115, 115, 115, 115, 115, 115, I'm this not has been artist. <laughs> <laughs> this has been this has been artist on artist on artist on artist answering the question. No, that's why they call it show business. Good night, Hollywood. Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists is an improvised Hollywood Roundtable podcast created and performed and produced by Kylie Brakeman, Jeremy Colhane, Angela Giratana, and Patrick McDonald. Music is by Gabriel Ponton. The opinions expressed on this podcast do not reflect the opinions of anyone who works on it, not even the performers, because this is an improvised podcast and we're stupid. Full video versions of AO, 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 A are available on YouTube, so please like and subscribe and leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, Hollywood. <laughs>